Lots of topics coming up, including top tips on starting a new exciting job and making an impact quickly and subscription e-commerce too. It's the e-commerce master plan podcast here to help you solve your marketing problems and grow your e-commerce business. Cutting through the hype to bring you inspiration and advice from the e-commerce sector and beyond. Here's your host, Chloe Thomas. Hello and welcome. It's great to have you here. Now, before we get into subscriptions and all things coffee, I want to start with a shout out to one of you. Hello, Mel Wendy from the USA. It is awesome to have you listening and thank you so much for the lovely review you put on Apple Podcasts about the show. Mel says, new to podcast, happy to have found my way here. Well, Mel, we are happy to have you listening too. She says, I started to list listening to podcasts to help me feel more productive when I was feeling lazy. And this has quickly become one of my favourites. Well, I love that review. I love the tip as well that when you're feeling lazy, listen to a podcast to make your time feel more productive. Great review. Great tip. Thank you very much, Mel. Now, in today's episode, I am catching up with an e-commerce marketer I first interviewed way, way back in 2018, episode number 173, if you're interested in that. Now, she shared excellent advice back then. So when I heard she had a new, exciting job in D2C, it was a no brainer to invite her back on the show. She is sharing some amazing tips. Um, she's also going to be talking us through how she started this new role, because it's uh, she's only four months in at the point where we're chatting, yet she's making an impact already. And I thought it'd be really interesting, because I know there's a lot of people moving jobs in the industry at the moment, to see how she's tackled going into a business and making at a senior level and making an impact quickly. So she's going to be sharing the three goals she set herself, the three areas she's working on. And they're possibly not what you might have thought we're also going to get her take on what's going on in the subscription space at the moment because she's working in coffee. So, you know, and we're going to be learning a fair bit about uh, marketing luxury coffee too. Please listen to the end of the episode though, because you do not want to miss out on her top tips, frequently described as the best bit of the show, nor do you want to miss my own take on this episode. Getting an online business off the ground is not easy. So if you find yourself working late, tackling a to-do list that's a mile long with your fifth cup of coffee by your side, remember, great email doesn't have to be complicated. That's what Klaviyo is for. It's the email and SMS platform built to help e-commerce brands earn more money by creating genuine customer relationships. Once you set up a free Klaviyo account, you can start sending beautiful branded messages in minutes, thanks to drag and drop design templates and built-in guidance. And with e-commerce specific recommendations and insights, you can keep growing your business as you go. Get started with a free account at klaviyo.com forward slash masterplan. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash masterplan. And now to introduce today's special guest. Christina Smith is the head of D2C at Big Island Coffee Roasters, a multi-award winning coffee business with sustainability at its core. Founded seven years ago, they launched a D2C Shopify site three years ago and are aiming to double sales both this year and next. Hello, Christina. Hi, Chloe. Good to see quote unquote, see you again. <laughs> yeah. Awesome to be catching up with you again. And it's been a massive four years since you were last on the podcast. Um, globally, a lot's gone under the bridge over the, in those four years. And I know you've been up to quite a lot as well. So what's been happening? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, in the past four years, one or two things have happened, I think, both personally and to your point, globally, somewhat related. Um, the last time we spoke, I was at a company called Keen Footwear, uh, an outdoor footwear company based in Portland, Oregon, probably might still actually be there had this funny little thing called the pandemic not happened. My husband got a job in a different city and, you know, four, four, four or 4,000 years ago, we all thought, well, this remote thing isn't possible. So I guess I should probably look at getting a job elsewhere too. So I, I left the company and got a job in the city that my husband was supposed to, to go work in. 
only to go on lockdown uh, <laughs> the day he was supposed to start his new role. So the move that we thought would happen never happened. And um, as, as you, you know, find out, you know, life keeps going on and the pandemic certainly in the first six, eight months threw everyone for a lot of curves, both personally and professionally. Long story short, at the end of 2020, which still feels like a thousand years ago, mm -hmm. um, landed at a fitness company called TRX Training and was brought in to, you know, focus on a lot of the same things that I'm focusing on now at Big Island, um, coffee roasters, acquisition, conversion, retention, you know, no big deal. Just get the customers in the door, facilitate their spending of the money and get them to come back and spend even more money. And was um, at TRX for about a year and a half when um, I started to notice a very interesting phenomenon that there were a lot of coffee companies hiring for e-commerce, D2C, acquisition, growth, digital roles, um, which was quite fascinating to me. I don't know what was happening globally, but certainly that's what I was seeing in the U.S. And coffee in the coffee industry is something I have been enamored with for decades now. And I don't just say that lightly, like I have been obsessed with many of the brands and the philosophy and the concept and never mind the actual product from quite some time. So when the opportunity presented itself at Big Island Coffee Roasters, I, I took a massive leap of faith, much smaller company than anything I'd ever worked in, both in terms of revenue as well as the number of bodies in the door, if you will. But it just seemed like the timing was right. I think they've got the wind at their back in terms of the direction that they're going. The, you know, the, the co-founders, a husband and wife team are so ridiculously solid. It's just every day I get up very excited to proverbially come to work at my dining room table. How cool to find that job during your career, because many people never, never find something that, that's that exciting. It's usually, usually the job itself I'm very interested in. And the industry is like, okay, I, I can get interested about it. I can get excited about it. But it, this might be the first time I've walked in, in the door, so to speak, and been genuinely just giddy as a child to the point that I have to often during the day go, no, 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 as exciting as this is and as interested in you are, you've got to focus on the job. You can ask the questions about the coffee and the bean and the farmer later, just focus on the job. <laughs> yeah. Stop <laughs> learning. Exactly. <laughs> go do some marketing. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, that's never a bad thing, is it? So long as you realize you need to actually go and do some marketing. It, it took me a moment, I won't lie. <laughs> so um, tell us a little bit about uh, Big Island Coffee Roasters. Where where in the world are they? Where are they selling to? <laughs> Literally, where in the world are they? Um, so as the name implies on the tin, Big Island Coffee Roasters are a coffee roastery located on the Big Island. So the island of Hawaii. And they they have they're on the eastern side of the island, if that means anything to anyone. If we if anyone kind of appreciates what that island you know looks like, Kona is on the western side, and that's where the the well known Kona coffee kind of you know like little stretch. I'm I'm gesturing like anyone can see what I'm talking <laughs> about, but I'm kind of like drawing the map in my head. Getting very passionate about the Indeed, location of the coffee, yeah, coffee swath bushes. of land, and then Big Island Coffee Roasters are located on the eastern side near Hilo but not super close in a little town called Mountain View. Excellent. And um, selling globally, aren't you, the, the coffee products? We sell globally with the exception of, a, you know, an occasional decaf coffee or a special guest star coffee. All of our coffee is sourced from the islands of Hawaii. So we do take that true local concept as seriously as we possibly can. And, you know, there are hundreds, if not thousands of, you know, of farmers on the islands that are just waiting to be discovered beyond, again, that traditional big brand Kona coffee label. And, you know, that's, that's certainly something that feeds into that sustainability, you know, as a kind of, I'll say a founding principle of the company. You know, we really try to source locally, quote unquote, we, we, pay a wage to the point that, that concept of fair trade is not even a conversation because we're already paying those wages, um, that, that price per pound, if you will. And then the, you know, we actually rely on, um, renewable energy to run the roastery as well. I think right, last time I heard, we are practically a hundred percent like off the grid, so to speak, when it comes wow. to the energy we use to, to roast our coffee. Very cool. And that's, that's, um, 
you know, it, it's it's relatively straightforward to do the paying people properly so they can do the right thing and growing the beans and all the rest of it. But it's for a business that, that whose business is in roasting something to have gone um, sustainable uh, and eco with your energy consumption is quite something. Yeah, I think it's quite a common practice, if you will, or an attempt by many businesses on the island to be as eco-friendly as possible. So while it's obviously not easy to a certain extent, there's a lot of encouragement around that type of business practice in that state. Excellent. And tell us a bit a bit more, I suppose, about the product. Um, it's this isn't your um your your basic Nest Cafe option, is it? This this is a kind of curated specialist coffee that that the aficionado will appreciate it, it you, know, you hit the nail on the head with that word aficionado because the way that we like to think about our product is we are small batch roasted to order and that small batch concept you know a lot of people probably have heard of that when they think about their favorite winery or their favorite distillery maybe even their favorite craft brewery and that's, that's quite frankly, the, the space we wish to play in as well. So while we may source green beans, not to be confused with green beans, <laughs> while we, we may source green beans year round, we will only roast the product when your order is placed. And so we, you know, that's something we, we have focused on from the very beginning. So that package that arrives on your front doorstep, whether you live on the other side of the island. And so you might get it a few hours later because the owners have decided to drive it over to you or you're around the world where, you know, a national international carrier has shipped it to you. The, those roasted beans should be less than a week old by the time they're going into your coffee cup. And, you know, as a result of that effort, if you will, um, and that the limited space of which the island of Hawaii occupies. So there's there's literally a finite volume of coffee beans that can be grown on that island and a finite number of beans that we can purchase and a finite number of beans that we can roast. There is a premium price that is attached to our product. If you do the math, it is still cheaper than walking into, you know, insert brand name here of whatever <laughs> you're, I'm not going to throw anyone under the bus because I've got many of them that I love as well. Um, but, you know, whatever that favorite coffee shop is of yours where you might pay $2 for even an average cup of black coffee, never mind three, four, five, six dollars $6 for a, a larger latte, we're still a fraction of that cost. So it's it's definitely not the cost of what you would pluck off of the shelf in your grocery store, but it's it's certainly you know as as the phrase I I don't know if, I don't know if it was coined by Howard Schultz you know ten fifteen years ago gosh maybe twenty by now oh my gosh um, that concept of affordable luxury, but we certainly think of ourselves as being able to provide an affordable luxury to kind of those who know. And I guess it's I love I love that affordable luxury angle because I think it, it it's a re as a as a someone you know classically trained marketer it's all about defining your competition and defining who you're in comparison with which absolutely you know, I could spend the rest of this talking about but we probably shouldn't um, but <laughs> the other interesting thing I thought from what you just said was how there is that if Hawaii is an island. There is a finite amount of space. There's a finite amount of space that can be made, you know, given over to coffee growing. So there is a limit to where the business can grow to. So as a as a growth marketer, as a you know head of D to C, how how do you? I mean, you know, obviously the business is still at an early stage, and, and we said in the intro you're planning on growing, doubling the next couple of years. That that's a big ask, isn't it? When there's the limited supply with also the growth piece, how are you handling that? It is. That's a great question. And, you know, the easy button would obviously be, well, let's source from other countries that grow coffee. But that wouldn't remain true to who we are as a brand. Again, big island. <laughs> that should be a really big hint about what we're trying to do. And so while we do have a lot of runway in terms of, you know, kind of where we stack up in terms of the coffee purchasers in the state of Hawaii, there, are, there will, you know, what a great problem it would be to eventually go, you know what, we've bought all the coffee we, <laughs> we can buy. We can't buy anymore. We currently buy about 10% of the coffee that's produced in the state. So there is definitely runway. But, you know, beyond, shall we say, coffee beans and coffee product in that purest sense, 
I think there's personally, I think there's plenty of opportunity in coffee adjacent products as well. Teas, you know, products that have coffee in them, but wouldn't be coffee, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. We actually had a product that we developed and came out, I believe, late last year. So prior to my arrival, and it's called Espresso Bites. It's, it looks like a chocolate bar, but it is made with cocoa butter. Um, so it's like a, it's a coffee flavored product. It's vegan or vegetarian, depending on the one that you get. And it is ridiculously delicious. I actually, I know that people can't see it, but I do keep one of them with me at all times when I need my caffeine fix. But I think that's a good example of the type of product that we could branch out into in which the brand is still growing. There is still a coffee element to what we're doing, but it would use less coffee product, quote unquote, versus that 10 ounce or five pound bag of coffee that we might sell you. Got it. Now, uh, there's a, there's various elements of the business I want to get into, but you've only been in the role for about four months at the moment. Yeah, which, time flies and you're having fun too, Chloe. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, and, you know, what you're doing is something I've never really done and which would scare the pants off me, which is going in seniorly to a business that's already got a D2C or an e-commerce operation. You know, all my businesses, I've built the team from zero up. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've been in charge of the strategy. There's been very little that's gone before. And I, but I know an awful lot of people at the moment are making that leap into higher level roles, going into existing businesses, into existing spaces. So how have you gone about approaching that over those four months? Ooh, that's a great question. There's a, there's a few things that come to mind to try to respond to that. The first thing I will say, even though the company has obviously been in existence and had the technology and has been selling online for several years now, there is still a difference between having the technology and having the process, having the technology and having the strategy. The team that is in place right now, it's, it's still a tiny team. It's a very, very small team. So I didn't walk into a company with a team of 10 or even five. And quite frankly, a lot of the heavy lifting is still being done by the co-founders because that's, that's what you do in a small business. And so there are, I'd say, three main goals for me to help this company move into that next level. Number one is to establish process which can enable efficiency. If we're doing something that's taking three hours and maybe there's a way we could do it and it takes 30 minutes, let's figure that out. And either that's by refining the process itself or if there's a technology which will enable us to do that at, 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 a, at a scale, then let's figure that out. And that's been, I hate to use the word playbook because I generally roll my eyes at the concept of playbooks, <laughs> but that's kind of been a, something in my playbook for many, many years now. And then the other thing is trying to take as much off of the plates of the co-founders as they will humanly allow me to do. And <laughs> I, I, know that, I like that bit, as they will allow indeed, me to do. Indeed. Of course, you know, it is, this is their company. This is their baby. I am very, you know, aware of that and want to respect that. But it is not a great use of their time to do some of the ticky tacky tasks, if you will, or even ticky tacky strategy when they should be out there as the face of the brand, you know, whether it's fundraising, speaking to potential board members, potential investors, whatever. So I'm trying to do anything I can to help get things off of their plate so they can elevate the time that they're spending on the things that at, certainly at that high level will really move the needle. And it's not to say they're not moving the needle doing what they're doing, but there's a difference between moving the needle in terms of generating an incremental $50,000 of sales versus moving the needle generating an incremental $5 million investment. Massively different examples there. And then the third thing is the actual strategy. And I mean no disrespect to, to the co-founders. And I think if, if you ask them, they would probably admit this because that, that's why they hired me. They're not e-commerce professionals. I mean, this husband and wife team, oh my gosh, they are so smart. It is, I love working with them. They're so smart. And they know the business of coffee. I've learned so much from them in the few short months that I've been here and cannot wait to know, think about what I will know a year from now in this space. And they know the brand, right? They are the brand. And they've obviously figured out a lot by trial and error since the company's been open and with the installation of our, of our technology platform, of our e-commerce platform three years ago. But 
they've not spent 15 <clears throat> plus years, <laughs> 20, <laughs> God, I'm starting to feel old years in the e-commerce space. So that's what I bring to the table is that ability to go, here's everything that I've done over the past 20 years. And maybe we quite frankly forget the first 15 because this place has changed so much. Mm -hmm. But certainly here's what I've seen and done the past five years. That I feel pretty confident will work. And so I think we should do it. And so let's, let's think about that. Here's some things that I've done that failed like nobody's business, but maybe it's worth trying again because things change. This is a different brand, a different company. And, you know, hopefully I've also brought my, my list of contacts with me as well. I've been fortunate enough to work with some ridiculously smart companies and some ridiculously smart people in this space over the years that because I, I know where my limits are and that's fine. And that's when I tap into other people and other technologies that can, can help press go and help build that strategy further faster. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And I think um, the really big takeaway for all of us is the first two things you mentioned, so and two thirds of where you said those those goals are for you are around team and process and efficiency and making the most of the resources you've already got. So everyone take that one on board. Um, I really, really, really though want to talk to you about a subscription because I think that is is a space which we don't talk enough about on this podcast, I think, uh, is an area where there is huge opportunity for e-commerce businesses, but often people are kind of told, you must do subscription. Subscription's awesome without a real business reason to do it. So how are you finding subscription in the coffee world? It's really funny what you just said, because as, as you were speaking, I was thinking about a few companies that I've worked at over the years where that has been a fairly serious conversation about the subscription, you know, concept. And I'm sorry, but there was just not a need for the subscription of insert product here. There just wasn't. But it seems like an easy button to push, right? Let's just push the button on subscriptions. We'll go to bed and wake up the next morning having made $10 million more. And while that sounds fabulous, and I think we would all really love to find whatever that magic button is, it's not it, that, that I have yet to find that to be the case. It is clear to me, Certainly in the industry that I work in, coffee subscriptions, that has absolutely grown like gangbusters for the past several years. It was kind of creeping in that direction pre-pandemic, I do believe, but certainly the pandemic really pressed go on that concept because, again, people aren't going into their local coffee shop either because – well, the coffee shop is no longer open. They're no longer commuting or, you know, finances have changed because of the world that we're in right now. And so the idea of going out and spending that kind of money on the coffee when you can have it come to your house is absolutely trending in that direction. And unlike a lot of businesses or industries in the pandemic where there was that massive spike of growth and it held on for a brief couple of weeks or maybe in a few months and then crashed right back down to pre-pandemic levels. I don't yet see that happening in this space. I think there's a, again, I said the word runway earlier as it relates to our business, but I think in the coffee space in general, there's a massive amount of runway in the industry as a whole. So I think when I, so then there's, so there's that going on. And then I think the other thing is acknowledging how, well, like on the flip side is acknowledging you can't just set it and forget it. Like this is this is a business concept or strategy or model, whatever, you know, insert cool word here that we are constantly talking about that the subscription offering, how can we improve the experience for the for our customers who have signed up? Obviously, how can we sign up more individuals? And you know, what are the benefits, the economics of a subscription model? Um, there's there's a lot of complexity that goes into the concept. Oh, and then there's the operational side too, right? You know, there's the type of subscription, which is someone ticks the box and says, I want this product once every month on this date. Pretty straightforward and simple. And, you know, we should all be, you know, desire to have that as an option, you know, or as a capability on our website to offer our consumer that consistent revenue over the course of the lifetime of that customer. There's also the concept of like a coffee of the month club, right? A membership club, which is, it's a subscription, but it is a slightly different beast. But certainly for us, what that means when we ship our of the month club coffee, which is, you know, typically a coffee that's not on the menu, so to speak. So it, there's an exclusivity component, but that, that ends up happening for us at one moment in time every month. 
And so to go from, I'm making the numbers up, but you'll get what I'm saying, to go from shipping 200 orders every day of the week, 200, 200 to, oh my God, we got to ship a thousand orders today. (laughs) It blows our operations up. And so we have to, so we're really having to think about how we can approach growing the membership without blowing up our operations every time. And like I said earlier, we roast to order. So not only is it the distribution that gets blown up for a few days, it's the roastery that gets blown up for a few days. So we've got a little bit of a double whammy there that we have to contemplate. And so I think certainly for any business in which there is a, you know, on demand component to the product that they generate or that they make, plus the shipping concept, it's certainly something to be aware of when contemplating, you know, that subscription model. I absolutely think for the right industries and the right companies, it's the thing to do. Strategically for us, it's incredibly important as as it is for most of the coffee companies on the island of Hawaii based upon we know what I know and just what I've seen. So I don't think this is going away anytime for any of us. E-commerce master plan is supported by some of the greatest companies in the e-commerce sector. Here's a reminder of who they are. I want to tell you about Awesome, spelt O-S-O-M-E. They are the experts in organising your e-commerce business accounts so you don't have to worry about filing company reports or paying taxes on time. Awesome accountants take care of all your finance admin and are on hand to answer your questions. It's really easy to link your online store, bank accounts and payment systems to the Awesome app, which then keeps track of your spending, profits and financial performance in real time, giving you peace of mind and saving you time too. Plus, using the Awesome system will save your business thousands of pounds every year. To get a demo and find out how much time and money Awesome could save you, go to ecmp.info forward slash awesome, fill in your details and hit the let's go button. Make sure you use the link ecmp.info forward slash awesome, that's O-S-O-M-E, as it will automatically add a coupon to save you £110. I believe one of the top five things you need to master in 2022 is partnership marketing. And one of the partnership marketing methods that's going to explode this year is affiliate marketing. That's paying publishers of blogs, YouTube channels, email newsletters and more a commission for the sales they drive to your website. The success of affiliate marketing is built on the relationships you build with your publishers. And that all begins by finding the right publishers. Wouldn't it be amazing if there was a tool you could use to identify the affiliate publishers driving traffic to your competitors? Well, there is. It's called Publisher Discovery and you can try it for free for seven days at ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash discovery. Get the essential affiliate marketing growth tool, Publisher Discovery at ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash D-I-S-C-O-V-E-R-Y. It's time for the Top Tips Round. Okay, I love this section because it gives me and our listeners some really quick ideas for taking our businesses to the next level. Christina, are you ready for the Top Tips? Oh, let's do it, Chloe. (laughs) Okay, the book top tip. If everyone listening to this podcast agreed to take Friday off and read a book to make their business better, which book would you recommend? One of my favorite authors is a gentleman named Atul Gawande. He's a medical doctor who has written books over the years through the lens of the medical profession, but that you can apply to other areas of your of the world, of your life. The book that really resonated with me that he wrote is called The Checklist Manifesto. And as I mentioned earlier around process and efficiency, That is exactly what that book is about, is trying to come up with a methodology that's going to help you understand what that checklist needs to look like to drive, you know, to not only drive process and efficiency, but in the case of his examples where he was operating on patients, the idea of like, you know, not leaving a scalpel behind in someone's, you know, (laughs) body. Um, So it's it's to force a level of excellence in everything that you do as well. Highly recommend. Great recommendation. Okay, the traffic top tip. Which marketing method do you either prize above all others or think doesn't get the press it deserves? 
This is actually something I've been talking about for a couple of years now. Quite frankly, this may have been the very thing that I said to you when we spoke four years ago, but I still don't think it's getting the love that it deserves. I still think it's considered the redheaded stepchild of digital marketing. So I'm going to, I'm going to mention it again, and that's affiliate marketing partnership marketing, depending on, you know, how you, how you like to call it. But I think the idea of reach, you know, finding external partners, and I don't mean the traditional, you know, Googles and Facebooks of the world, but I mean, maybe adjacent brands, adjacent industries, content generators, you name it, and tapping into the power of what they can do, the audience that they have, and the power that you have, and trying to find that symbiosis, and whether that's purely just a fiscal relationship, because they've joined an affiliate network and you've joined an affiliate network and you're, they're monetizing the clicks that's driving to your site, or you find a way to tap into each other's audiences, sweepstakes, email exchange, you name it. I think there's still so much to be explored in that space. Oh, you are speaking my language. I've, I've been on a bit of a partnerships mission this year. So yes, there we go. More partnerships, people. Um, okay. The tool top tip, maybe a collaboration tool, a social media plugin, a phone app, or just a way of working. Is there a cool little tool you use that makes you and your team more efficient from day to day? I'm almost embarrassed to admit this, but I still, I'm so old school. Just give me an Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> I'm really happy. Um, and I know that's not terribly sexy or exciting, but I often find even when I'm needing to write a Word document, that sometimes the best place for me to start, especially if it's a strategic document, is to start with a framework. And transactionally speaking, I find it easier to build a framework in Excel because of the cells and how you can adjust rows and columns versus starting in a Word document. I know that I'm embarrassed to even put that out there, but I just love Excel so much and wish everyone loved it and utilized it as much as I did. So I'm going to put it out there. Yep. I, I like, I really <laughs> like that because I think, you know, there's nothing wrong with using a tool that you are really, really familiar with to do something odd with because it makes it better for you to do it. It makes me faster at what I do. And at that efficiency thing, it's, it's not me just giving it lip service. I really believe in trying to find efficient ways in doing things. So it's a great point, Chloe. Oh, well, it was yours, really. Um, <laughs> okay. And the last one, the growth top tip. If you met someone today who's focused on growing their e-commerce business from 100 orders per month to 1,000, what would be your number one tip for them? Again, horribly unsexy, really boring. But my first question to that, or my, actually instead of a statement, it would be a question. Do you know where those orders are coming from? And what I mean is, do you understand the data behind your business? There's a management phrase, you cannot manage what you cannot measure. And so if you don't know where those first hundred orders are coming from and who the people are and maybe literally where they are coming from, where the clicks are coming from, you are never going to be able to go to the business to that next level. So I, I'm a massive fan of starting with the data and letting that help you to make informed business decisions. And put all that data in Excel, people. Yeah. That's what we're saying. <laughs> you got it, Chloe. Um, Christina, it's been very, very cool chatting with you. Before we let you go, though, could you let all the listeners know where they can find you and your business on the web and social media, please? So as, as, as I mentioned earlier, the name of the company that I work for is Big Island Coffee Roasters. Our website is BigIslandCoffeeRoasters.com. If you're on Facebook or Instagram, um, you'll also find us at Big Island Coffee Roasters. Easy as that, everyone. Just look out for Big Island Coffee Roasters. Um, Christina, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been lovely catching up with you. And um, you've shared so much quite diverse advice, but awesome advice for the listeners. So thanks for coming on the show. Thank you, Chloe. It's always a pleasure. Wow, but we covered some big old topics in that chat with Christina. So how she was explaining how she set her goals for this new role in this exciting new company was so interesting. Number one, establish processes for efficiency. So all about saving the team's time to spend it in better ways. Uh, secondly, take things off the plates of the co-founders. Because as a business grows, you've, the co-founders have to stop doing some things and change change what they do. But that can be a really tricky process. So it's so, so interesting. She's got that as one of the key goals. And then thirdly, thirdly, the actual marketing growth strategy. 
So that was really interesting for anyone looking to make, any of you out there looking to make a big step change in performance of businesses you're working for, if you're just starting a new role, really interesting take on that. And then those points of view on subscription. I think subscription is poised for a big, a big strategic jump at the moment. It's not just a case of chuck a subscription up give the customer the same thing every month. Customers want to be involved. If you want to keep them stopping the churn, you need to be doing that. Yes, you need the great software in place. So as it's easily going to happen and all the, you know, the admin and everything works seamlessly, but also you've got to make that subscription interesting and compelling for the customer to, to keep using it. And that, that these days is a little bit for many above and beyond just simply the product. Loads of bits and pieces in there. You can get your hands on the notes from today's show, including our top tips and links to what we've mentioned by heading over to ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash podcast or use our new special director episode links. Just put ecmp.info forward slash episode number into the URL bar to go straight to the correct page. Once you get to the website, you can also add yourself to our email list so you don't miss out on any of the other things I share to help you improve your business including a recent series we've done on our sister podcast, Keep Optimizing, that was all about partnership marketing. We had four episodes each about a different way of partnering, be it with your own customers, be it with influencers, with affiliates or with other brands. Really fascinating set of sessions and they're all available to listen to right now on the Keep Optimizing podcast. And if you're on our email list, you would already know all about that. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning into this and every episode of the e-commerce master plan podcast. I bring you a new interview every single week because I want to inspire and help e-commerce business owners like you to succeed and thrive with your businesses, including progressing along the path to net zero. So if you know someone this show can help, please, please, please tell them to listen to the e-commerce master plan podcast. I hope you have an excellent week and don't forget to keep optimizing. Thank you for listening to the e-commerce master plan podcast. Find out more at ecommercemasterplan.com slash podcast. If you're marketing an e-commerce brand, you already know that data changes everything. More data means more power. And if your email or SMS tools can't handle all that data, they're probably holding you back. That's where Klaviyo comes in. It's top-notch personalization and segmentation help you send the right message at the right time, guided by unlimited real-time data from your online store and tech stack. Request a demo at klaviyo.com forward slash masterplan. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash masterplan.